If you have your Bibles, we're going to return to the Gospel of St. John, the ninth chapter. Amen? Amen? And Lord willing, we're going to wrap this show up today. So again, we're in the New Testament, the Gospel of St. John, the ninth chapter, beginning at verse 35. If you would turn there with us, that would be fantastic. Again, we're in the New Testament this morning, the Gospel of St. John, the ninth chapter. We're going to begin at verse 35. If you're there, I'm going to ask you to stand with me. I'm going to be reading out of the New King James Version. I'm going to ask that you follow along in uh, whatever particular translation of the Bible you may have. Amen? Amen. Before we go any further, let me just uh, uh, again uh, say thank you to the church as a whole for all of the wonderful Christmas gifts that you gave to me. Uh, thank you for the gifts for me and for my family, those who gave me personal gifts. I just want, I don't want to go any further without saying thank you. Doing my best to get my thank you cards out and all that, but if I'm delayed, I want you to know I am very, very appreciative. Amen? Amen. And to prove it, I am wearing one of my Christmas gifts today. This jacket, this tie, and the shirt, and the little matching hanky were all a part of my gifts from the church. Amen? So, thank you again. How I many know you got to keep the pastor looking good? Amen? So, John 9.35. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you now. Then he said, Lord, I believe and he worshiped him and Jesus said for judgment I have come into the world that those who do not see may see and that those who see may be made blind then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him are we blind also and Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, We see. Therefore, your sin remains. Amen? Amen. And so this, uh, this morning, our subject uh, for this brief text that we're looking at in conclusion of John chapter 9, I just want to hang it on uh, this phrase, a powerful testimony a powerful testimony we started the month off the first Sunday talking about being born blind which is the miracle highlighted here in John uh, chapter 9 uh, the second Sunday we talked about a parental testimony we heard what the parents had to say last Sunday we talked about a personal testimony we heard what the man himself had to say and then lastly in conclusion we're going to hear a powerful testimony which is what Christ has to say about himself. Amen? Amen? So shall we bow our heads in a word of prayer, Father in heaven? We look to you now. You are the author and finisher of our faith. All things begin and end in Christ Jesus. And it is from the wellspring of life that we receive everlasting and eternal life. So we've come again this Sunday morning, not for form, not for fashion, not necessarily for fellowship or even fun, but we've come with one question on our lips. Is there any word from the Lord? We've come that we might hear you speak. 
we've come that we might hear the very words of God. And with that being the request of the people, let me, let me, your humble servant, offer my humble request. Lord, that you would allow my flesh to decrease and allow the spirit of the living Son of God to increase, to be amplified, and to be made known to every person listening here. Holy Spirit, we invite you in. We give you the freedom and the liberty to do only what you can do which is interpret the word of God. Cause our hearts to be made glad. Cause our spirit to leap for great joy. And cause our body and our minds to be stirred like never before. That we might leave this place different than the way we came in. Going out rejoicing and giving all praise to the Son of God. This we ask in His name, His name alone. Amen. You may be seated all over the church. And at this point, I really believe that many of you, if not all of you, if you've been here for uh, all of the services this month, you guys can preach John 9. I don't think you really need any more assistance from me. Uh, I think you have it and are down uh, the road. But in verses, these concluding verses, uh, we find uh, Jesus Christ now summarizing what has just taken place. Any good teacher will go through the details of explaining the, de uh, uh, the finer points of the lesson, uh, documenting and highlighting those things that are pertinent for you to remember, maybe for a test or just to hold together uh, the knowledge that they are sharing. And then in conclusion, they often come back and now summarize everything that they've said. They've given you, they just, they just summarize, here it is, in three or four bullet points. This is what this whole lesson has been about. And that is really what we find taking place here in these last uh, five or six verses. And one thing I want to do, I want to read, because I think it'll help lift this up, uh, especially if you were not here for the previous services. But I just want to read verses 35 through 41 again. But this time I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation. And I just ask that you would give, uh, give ear to this reading. It says, when Jesus heard what had happened, he found the man and asked, do you believe in the Son of Man? The man answered and said, who is he, sir? I want to believe in him. It says, you have seen him, Jesus said, and he is speaking to you now. Yes, Lord, I believe, the man said, and he worshiped Jesus. Then Jesus told him, I entered into this world to render judgment, to give sight to the blind, and to show those who think they see that they are in fact blind. Some Pharisees who were standing nearby heard him and asked, are you saying that we're blind? And Jesus said, if you were blind, you wouldn't be guilty. But you remain guilty because you claim you can see. Amen? Amen. I like that reading because it says it in a little bit plainer English. This whole story about this man being born blind is Jesus Christ giving a visual presentation to the lesson he has just taught. The lesson that he has just taught is found in the second half of John chapter 8. It is, in there, it is in the second half of John chapter 8 that Jesus tells to all those that are gathered at the Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem, he declares to them that I am the light of the world. That's what he says. He says it uh, a number of times in the second half of John chapter 8, trying to get the people to understand who he was and the purpose of his coming. He not only declared that he was the light of the world, but he made that declaration during the lighting ceremony that took place each night during the Feast of Tabernacle. He used the backdrop of all of this celebration and all of the lamps being lit in, 
lit in celebration for the Feast of Tabernacle, he used that as the backdrop to now stand up and to declare to everyone, I am the light of the world. And now as any good teacher, he now goes forward and now gives a visual demonstration. How I many know we learn better by seeing? So he took what he had said and now he said, I am going to give you a visual demonstration of what it means for me to be the light of the world. So right after that, we go into John chapter 9 and John records uh, this significant miracle where Jesus encounters a man born blind. And what we have rehearsed over the last three weeks is how Jesus gave him a physical sight. A man that was born blind, uh, suffering from congenital blindness, uh, that through the miracle of Jesus Christ, he spit, he made clay, he put the clay on the man's eyes, told him to go to the pool of Shalom and wash, and the text record that the man came back seeing. And as the, as the Pharisees and others questioned the man, he gave his own personal testimony, which was simply, all I know is that I was once blind, and now I see. And he received his physical sight through the miracle of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now what we find here in the conclusion of John chapter 9, Jesus is now raising the point higher and saying, I came not only to do physical miracles, but I really came to do spiritual spiritual miracles what you have now seen and give witness to that has happened in this man's life physically being born blind but now through the miracle of Christ receiving his sight he said that is what I came to do spiritually in the life of all men is to give sight to blinded eyes do you follow what I'm saying Great. So I just lay that out there just as some context. And uh, you give me 15, 20 minutes, we'll walk you through these next uh, five or six verses. Amen? Amen. John, 30, uh, John 9, 35. Uh, it says, Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, do you believe in the Son of God? If you have your own Bible, not a church Bible, if you have your own Bible, iPad, iPhone, iTablet, whatever you have, but if it's yours, I want you to underline these three words, heard, found, and said. All in John 35, 935. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, do you believe in the Son of God? You have that? I don't know about you, but I'm so glad Jesus hears what's going on in my life. If you were here on last Sunday, we ended, it was, we didn't, I, we, I had mixed emotion. I didn't know whether we were on a high note, a low note, or what. Because at the end of it, they kicked the guy out of the temple. Right. And that, that was the guy's lifeline. That was his life support. They kicked him out of the temple. But aren't you glad that in just one verse later, it records that Jesus heard what had happened to the man. Amen. Amen. If you didn't get joy out of that, if you didn't get any hope, any comfort out of that, you, if, if you didn't, I did, I'm glad to know that Jesus knows exactly what's going on in my life. Amen. 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 That, 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 I, you may have missed it because it's right there, but it's a praise point. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. He didn't tell Jesus. He didn't pray to Jesus because he didn't he didn't know who Jesus was to pray to him. He was just going about his business, telling his personal testimony, rejoicing over what had happened in his life, and the people, watch this, at the church kicked him out. But the John records for us that Jesus heard what they had done. Like I said, I don't know about you, but I'm glad Jesus knows what's going on with me. I'm so glad that he knows my thoughts are far off. Watch this. Have, have you ever had a prayer that was so painful you couldn't pray it? 
I mean, you wanted to pray. But then when you went to pray, you couldn't find the words to phrase it or to describe it or to cause God to understand how you were feeling or reacting to the situation. But I'm glad that John said Jesus heard. Yeah. Even before the young man could articulate what had happened, how it happened, or how he felt about it, Jesus said, I already know. I'm glad about that. That, that. that helps me. That helps me as a believer to know that God knows. Some, some, sometimes you just, you go and pray and you just sit. Yes. <laughs> you don't say nothing. You don't do nothing. You just sit. And look, and he hears every word. He hears every word. So he heard that they had cast him out. Look at how good your God is. And when he had found him, we always like to give our testimony about how we found the Lord. But John records that for the blind man, he was cast out and it was Jesus who found him. Does anyone, it, and I don't want to mess your testimony up because I know you got to give it. But can anyone testify to the fact that it was Jesus who found you? I was lost, but now I'm found. Not by any works of my own. Not because I was looking for him. Not because I even knew that I needed him. But Jesus... Y'all help me preach and we get out of this. It ain't that many. So when he had found him, he said, we have a God who hears. We have a God who will come looking for you. And what I love most, we have a God that will speak to you. This guy had been cast out of the temple. And as a result, he was being shunned by everybody because no one wanted to associate with him for fear of reprisal that the Pharisees would also kick them out. Isn't that the parents' testimony? They, 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 they only went so far, but after a while they said, oh, we can't go any further because if we testify to the ways and works of Christ, they might kick us out. But aren't you glad when no one else will speak to you, when no one else will speak for you, we have a God. Why don't y'all just help me preach and let's just get out of here. We have a God that will speak to you in the stillness of the night, in the wee hours of the morning, in your car going down the road, on the bus running in the work. God will. And he said this, he said, do you believe in the Son of God? And then I thought that's strange. I said, this guy's just been kicked out of the temple. He's lost all means of financial support. He's just been oysterized by his mother and father, kicked out not only by the church, but now also by his family. It seems to me, if God hears and knows what's going on with me, if he takes the time to come and find me, that if he would say anything, it would be something to comfort or to help my present condition. That's me talking. But the text said of all the things that Jesus could say, what he chose to say is, do you believe in the Son of God? John 14, 6 says this. And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In this verse, the exclusiveness of Jesus as the only approach to the Father is emphatic. Only one way, not many ways, exists to God. And that one way is Jesus Christ. 
Jesus chose to say the most important thing yes. to him. Yes. In spite of his condition, in spite of where he found himself on life's ladder, now Jesus comes and said, do you believe in the Son of God? This is the question that if you get this question right, you'll pass the whole test. If you, if you can answer correctly now, you'll find yourself in the winner's circle. I know what has happened to you. I know where you are in life. I know your financial condition. I know your emotional condition. But do you believe in the Son of God? So come on, let's follow the story. So the young man answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And what I like about this guy's response is that even though Jesus didn't focus on his situation, condition, or predicament, neither did he. He could have said, wait, Lord, wait, wait, wait. Didn't you hear I just got kicked out of the temple? Didn't you just hear that my life has now been turned? You healed me on this side, and now on this side, my whole life has been turned upside down. This young man stayed right with Jesus. Jesus said, do you believe? He said, who is he, Lord, that I might believe in him? And what his response helps us to understand is that this man was now ready to believe in Jesus. He didn't focus on my situation. He didn't ask for any help. He, didn't he said, who is the Lord? That I may believe in him. Amen. You got to remember something about the young man. His encounter with Jesus, however many days ago this took place, Jesus made clay, put it on his eyes, and told him to go to the pool of Shalom and wash. After that, Jesus leaves the scene. Even though the man came back seeing, when they asked him, who, they asked him, they said, where's the man who did? He said, I do not know. Jesus had left the scene. When they uh, uh, inquired of his parents, Jesus wasn't around. When they interrogated him, Jesus wasn't around. And all that, I kept telling you, that his what? His faith was what? Growing. The progression of faith. He went from being a man to being a prophet to being a prophet sent from God you follow what I'm saying so he's now ready to believe but does not know in whom to believe do you follow what I'm saying this is a listening message you gotta listen to it. this ain't a preaching message. here you go if you haven't shouted Last Sunday, the Sunday before last, or the first Sunday, you probably not gonna shout. So it's no need for me trying to get you to shout. If you coming back and somebody told, oh, we had a great time, and you trying to get in this Sunday, too late, too late, you missed it. This is a listening message, and I want you to listening. I want you to listen because Jesus Christ models for us the behavior and purpose for every believer. Number one, ask the important question. And the important question is not going on with you. The important question is not how's your husband, how's your wife? The important question is do you believe in the Son of God. As believers, we, we, we have to be methodic. And I'm not saying being cold and calculated. I'm not saying all that. You got to be friendly and all of that. But as a believer, you have to understand that Jesus Christ died, gave his life, and gave you salvation. Not for you to sit back and talk about anything around the water cooler. He died and gave you a purpose. He said, go ye therefore into all the world 
And so somewhere in your conversation with your friends, your family, your co-workers, you must ask the important question. And the important question is not where you're going on New Year's Eve. It's not where you're planning, what your plans are for vacation. That may be a question, but it's not the important question. Touch your neighbor and say, ask the important question. And now verse 36 helps us to understand why. There are people all around you. And all of your circles of friends, families who are now ready to believe. They're ready. They're ready. They're ready. You don't know what has happened. You don't know why it happened. You, you, you don't know any of the details uh, uh, around the event. This is why you have to allow the Holy Spirit to direct you. Can I tell you what I found in my life? All the people who I say, oh yeah, they ready to be saved. Oh yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite that one to church because they're ready. Nine times out of ten, they reject Christ out of pocket. I mean, before I can get it out, they, no. <laughs> I mean, just, and don't even mix what, no. I'm not going. <laughs> I don't believe, I mean, just, just no. Because I used my own judgment, and I threw, I knew what was going on. I knew they'd just been through a hard time, and I knew they'd just been through, and I said, oh, this would be a good time to, to share Christ. And they reject him out of hand. Right off the bat. Then there are other people who when God has them ready, you barely have to say two words. And they say, I'll be there. I'm on my way. You say, you know what? To make it easy for you, I'll come and pick. No, I'll catch the bus. I'll meet you there. Why? Why? Because the Holy Spirit has them ready. And what he needs now is somebody who will ask the important question. Ask your neighbor, say, are you ready? Verse 37, Jesus said to him, now the guy said, I'm ready. He said, who is he, Lord? I'm ready. I, I, you just point him out. So Jesus said to him, you have both seen him. And it is he who is talking with you now. So again, if you have your own Bible, don't do it if you have a church Bible. But if you have your own Bible, you have both seen him. So underline seen. And it is he who is talking with you now. You have both seen him. That's important because what? The young man had never what? Seen. Had never seen him. He heard him. He heard him spit. He felt him touch his eyes. And he heard him tell him to go. But with his own new sight, he had never seen Jesus. He's ready to believe. He just doesn't know who to believe in. So Jesus asked the important question. He responds, I'm ready. So Jesus said, look, he laid it out there. He said, here it is. You have both seen him. So you're looking at him. And it is the one who is talking with you now. You now see me where before you couldn't. Did you get it? He couldn't see him because he was blind from birth. Romans said all have sinned and fallen short of the glory or the light of God. Jesus was referring not merely to the man's physical condition that he couldn't see because of congenital blindness. He was now referring to his spiritual condition. 
that he was unable to see him for who he really was. But Jesus said, I can fix that. He said, now you have seen him. And it is I, it is he who was talking with you now. Touch your neighbor and say, I hear something. I hear something. I've already heard what my neighbor said. And I've already heard what others who were familiar with my condition have said. It hurt my heart, but I heard what my parents had to say. I thought I would go to church and find someone who would hear my side, but I heard what the Pharisees had to say. And nobody supported my case. But along came Jesus. And this time when he spoke, the blind man not only was now able to see him for who he was, but now he recognized the voice of the Lord. Touch your neighbor and say, I hear something. Let me, let, me, let me give you this and get out of it. His voice is unlike any other voice. When he speaks, you will know. When he speaks, his voice will be distinguished from every other voice. Come on, find somebody and say, I hear something. When he speaks now, something inside of me starts to tremble. When he speaks now, something in my spirit is stirred like never before. Do I have any witnesses in my church? Touch a neighbor and say, I hear something. And it must be the voice of the Lord. Watch here, watch here. Verse 38. Now I want you to understand. When he heard him the first time, he was merely a man. Another passerby offering to do good to a guy down on his luck. That's all he was. He was like every other man who walked by of whom he begged alms. But, when it, but, but Jesus said, no, no. Spit, made clay, told him to go and wash. And now he's starting to realize this guy is more than just a man. And when he speaks the next time, my faith, which has been growing day by day, my confidence, which is being enlarged moment by moment, he's, every time he winked, his faith grew a little larger. Every time he wiped water out of his eyes, his faith grew a little larger. So much so that he said, Lord, who is your Lord that I might believe? Who is your Lord that I might put my faith in him? And he said, Lord, I believe. Do I have any believers in the church this morning? Have you ever heard him speak? Have you ever heard him heal you? Have you ever had him do anything in your life? So much so, you said, Lord, I believe. I believe. I believe. If 
I had the old church here. The old church was saying like this. You can't make me doubt it. Because I know, I wish I had my real church, too much about it. Because now, I believe, now, I know it for myself, now, now. And now that his faith had finally met the object of its affection. Look what John said. John said the man got down and worshiped him. Can I take 30 seconds and just worship the Lord? If he's done anything, if he's opened any kind of door, if he's made any kind of way, you ought to worship. Excuse me. Excuse me, I got to give him the glory. I was blind, but now. I can see y'all. I can see. I can see my way out. I can see my way clear. That's why I give him the glory. I was blind, but now I couldn't see my way out. I didn't know how I was going to make it, but along came Jesus. Excuse me while I pray. Excuse me. I gotta give him the praise. Excuse me. Lord, I believe. I believe. I believe now. I didn't know you were able. I didn't know you knew where I was. I didn't know you were coming looking for me. But now I believe. I believe. I believe. Give him a praise. John said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, let me see if my real church is here, believeth on him. Shall have ever Lasting life. You've confused my praise. You believe. I'm praising God for something he's done in my natural life. 
and while that may be true I'm really praising God for what he's done in my spiritual life I was dead with no God on my side I was spiritually blind and cast out but along came Jesus and now I you have everlasting Let me wrap it up. Let's get out of here. Verse 39, Jesus said, For judgment I have come into the world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may be made blind. Here is the whole purpose for the man being born blind. Jesus had to take them the long way. Yes. Took the disciples. To buy, they, they all started out by saying what? Who sinned? Yes. Yes. He said nobody sinned. Amen. This man is a predetermined condition. Yes. So that the works of God yes. should be revealed yes. in and through him. Yes. Amen. 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 He was nothing more than a teacher's aide. Yes. He was a prop for class. And God set him up years ago so that he would have this opportunity to believe in him. Now let me show you this. Let me show you this. Because if you hoop and holler, you miss all of this. But let me show you this. On the occasion that the blind man first sees Jesus, he believes he is the son of God immediately. Never saw him. The very first time he saw him, he yells out, I believe, and falls on his face and worships him. On the first sight of Jesus. Now that is in contrast to all the people who could see. Amen. Amen. They saw Jesus all of his life. Amen. They knew where he was born, knew his mother, knew his father, were familiar with his stepbrothers, stepsisters, and though they saw him, they never believed him. They never believed him. John 6 36 says this but I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe that was Jesus's testimony of them he said you've seen me you've seen every miracle you've heard every praise report you've actually been at some of the sermons I've actually preached and yet you don't believe and you've seen me all your life You hearing me? Yeah. Right. This condition could be applicable to some people here today. And I'm just I apologize. I'm just gonna be I apologize. Because when you preach this story, yes. the listener uh -huh. loves to from, uh, associate themselves uh -huh. with the blind man. Yeah, because the blind man, when it's all over, he comes out looking good. He come, he got his sight back. He got his soul saved. He's able to worship Jesus. So we love to sit in the pews and say, yeah, pastor, because I'm the blind man. Are you really? Because there's some other people in this story who were blind. 
and never receive their sight. He said, for judgment, I've come into the world that those who do not see may see. That's the blind man. But then he goes on. That those who see may be made blind. I don't think you understand the significance or the weight of what Jesus said. The blind man was born blind. Had nothing to do with him. Had nothing to do with him. Had nothing to do with his parents. God fixed it that way. It didn't matter what happened. It didn't matter what doctor they took him to. His blindness was incurable. Until Jesus came along. Now he's saying there are others who though they are able to see naturally. Listen to what he said. That those who see may be made blind. One they can't see. But then he fixes it so that they will never see. Are you reading the text? The text said that they would be made blind. All because they rejected the light of the world. This guy, when he got the first glimpse of light, oh my God, he gobbled it up. Oh my God, he said, I believe. He fell down, worship, he praised God. It didn't matter who was watching, it didn't matter who saw him. He was already cast out of the church, so it didn't matter anyway. <laughs> Listen to what the Pharisees said. They said, Lord, are we blind also? And I believe they asked the question because they knew the answer. <laughs> I think that's why they asked the question. Look, read, read what it says, verse 40. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words. They heard Jesus sum it all up. He just summed up the whole, the whole, the whole experience. He just summed it up. And said to him, are we blind also? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we can see. Therefore, your sin remains. And it is, it is your sin, which in this context is the sin of unbelief. In spite of all of the mounting evidence. I mean, I mean, there was so much. The blind man believed him. Some of the neighbors believed him. The Bible said there was division among them. Why? Because something, it was so much evidence. That blind man said, look, I don't know much scripture. But I tell you what I do know. God does not hear sinners. I can tell you that. I know enough of the Pentateuch to tell you that. He does not hear sinners. And he said, it has never been recorded in history of a man ever receiving his sight having been born blind. There was so much evidence to support Jesus' claim as the Son of God that their rejection not only caused them to be blinded to the light, but caused them to be condemned by the light. Simply because they refused to believe. 
I'll give you this and I'm out of your way. Proverbs 26, 12 says this. Do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. I'm not making this up, Bishop. That's in the word of God. If you ever find a guy who is wise in his own eyes, look, look what, look what the, the, right before we started this in verse 34, look what the Pharisee says. They told the guy, you have been a sinner all your life and you are now trying to teach us the masters of the law, the teachers of the law. Do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for him than for a fool. There is more hope for a fool than for him. Let me give you this. I'm finished. I'm so glad you shouted earlier. I'm so glad you got it in. Because I, I, I knew you weren't going to shout off this. Here it is. John 15, 22. Let me just read it. If I had not come and spoken to them... They would have no sin. Have no sin. This is Jesus Christ speaking. Uh -huh. He said, but now they have no excuse uh -huh. for their sin. Yes. Yes. He who hates me hates my father also. Right. If I had not done among them the works, uh -huh. the miracles, yes. which no one else did, uh -huh. they would have no sin. Have no sin. But now... They have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened, that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Amen. No cause. It's hated. I told you so often when we minister this text we preach so hard about the blind man we, we forget about the blind people and we're so glad that the blind man got his sight back I mean we completely lose focus on those who never saw at all that was my prayer I said Lord I got, I'm wrapping it up I said I've preached the best I could about the blind man but this Sunday help me not to preach about the blind man because there are others in this story who are blind and in jeopardy of never seeing at all. You know who they are? They're the people that come to church every Sunday. So as a result, we think they can see. You know who the others are? The people are the others are those that serve in ministry. Every Sunday. They don't just come to church. They work in the church. They usher every Sunday. They sing, they play, they keep the yard up. And so as a result, we think that they can see. They can see. Why else would they be doing what they're doing? One of the most damning statements Jesus made. He said, I came to my own. And they received me not. I came to the people who should have recognized me when I came. They had the law. And all of the law spoke of Christ Jesus. But because they love the praises of men more than the praises of God, they refuse to believe. Church, I'm not even going to go any further because I can tell by your faces. You got the message. You've got it. Now the question becomes, what are you going to do about it? Because listen, any of you, you're not the blind man. I know you like to read the story and think, oh yeah, pastor, that's great, because I'm the blind man. No. Look, look, not this Sunday. You might have been blind last Sunday, but not this Sunday. This Sunday, you have been, you have been given 
52 weeks of uncompromising evidence. Sunday after Sunday after sermon after sermon, testimony after testimony after testimony. If you don't believe now, it's not that he's not the son of God. It's that you refuse to accept him as the son of God. And for you, there remains no hope. Because if you let this condition go on any further, listen to what I tell you. He's going to make you blind. Right now you're blind, but there's hope of sight. All you got to do is turn to the light of the world. Acknowledge that's all you got to do. Just believe the evidence you've been given. But if you shut the door again and turn your back to the risen Savior and say in spite of what you've done for me, in spite of what you've said to me, I refuse. I turn my back on you. If you do that this Sunday, listen to me. He's going to make you blind. The time will come when you will want to see and won't be able. And no one's going to be able to pray it off you. No one's ain't going to be able to praise you up. In, no, you, you, the head, the, he said, for judgment, I came. He said, I, I came to draw the line. Don't, don't make no doubt about it. I'm drawing the line. And let those that fear the Lord and believe on the name of his son come on over to the Lord's side. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will. We're not going to ignore that evidence anymore. No, no, no. It's, it's too overwhelming. I've received the most powerful testimony I could ever receive from Jesus Christ himself. Church, you have the word of the Lord. We're closing out another year. Another year which you've heard the gospel preach. Another year which you've heard testimonies given by the saints. Another year that you've been surrounded by the sweet fellowship of the Christian community. And that's a testimony too. Being in the fellowship of the saints. That's a testimony of his love. His goodness. His As the saints reach out and cover you. But if you can turn your back on that. Say no I can make it on my own. I don't need him. I don't need them. And I don't need his word. If that's your choice that's fine. That's fine. But I just, I want you to hear, I want someone to have told you that if you make that choice, he's going to cause you to be blind. Doesn't have to be that way. You can receive the light today. And all you got to do is what the blind man did is say, What, Lord? I believe. I believe. I just needed someone to point me in the right direction. I didn't need someone trying to get in my business. I didn't need someone trying to figure out what happened, why it happened, who did what. No, 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 no. I just needed someone to ask me the most important question. Do you believe in the Son of God? That's my message to you. I believe. That's my message. I am a believer.